This is Mr. Martin. This is a video uh, for section 4.3. It's a second video. Um, so for this video we're going to start out talking about the fundamental trigonometric identities. And um, <clears throat> it, it would be in your best interest to kind of memorize these. Uh, most of them you probably already know. Um, I think the only new ones for you are going to be the Pythagorean identities if you haven't seen those before. But really um, you should know the reciprocal identities because um, we talked about those you know for example the um, sine and cosecant are reciprocals so the sine of theta is equal to 1 over the cosecant of theta so um, you know so take a look at carefully at these um, and then over here we've got that the cosecant is uh, 1 over the sine of theta so you know we're just kind of flipping things around there and then we move over to the quotient identities and um, you, we know that the tangent of theta is sine over cosine and the cotangent of theta would be the reciprocal of that so cosine over sine. Now um, the Pythagorean identities may or may not be new for you um, so the key one here is really this uh, first one and um, to be honest this is the only one that I memorize because it's pretty easy it's sort of like the Pythagorean theorem it, um, except it's just sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. <coughs> and then, um, you know, once you do the derivation of these other two, it becomes pretty straightforward and you can do it rather quickly. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you guys first is um, how to get the second and third uh, Pythagorean identities from the first Pythagorean identity. So the f what we're going to do is we're going to take the Pythagorean identity, the first one, sine squared theta, plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And I'm going to divide everything by sine squared theta. So divide that, divide that, divide that. Okay, now I'm going to simplify. So I've got sine squared over sine squared, so that's going to be 1. I've got cosine squared over sine squared. Now we know up here that um, cosine over sine is cotangent so if we square everything it still is going to work so cosine squared over sine squared is going to be cotangent squared theta and in a similar way we know that 1 over sine is cosecant so 1 over sine squared is going to be cosecant squared theta so you can see in one step we've got um, the second or the third actually the third Pythagorean identity over there All right so now in a similar manner we're gonna get the other one so we've got sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1 and now instead of dividing everything by sine squared I'm gonna divide everything by cosine squared so divide by cosine squared theta here here and here so sine over cosine is tangent, which would mean that sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. So tangent squared theta, anything divided by itself is 1. And 1 over cosine is secant, so 1 over cosine squared is going to be secant squared. And there you have it. So again, once you do this a couple of times and um, you get better at it, <coughs> you could just derive these and put them at the top of your paper uh, for a quiz or a test. And, um, you know, it's two less things to memorize. Um, you know, as always, if you have questions, write them down in the margin of your notes and make sure you ask me in class. So let's take a look at how we might use some of these examples to help us solve problems. Um, now, keep in mind that there are usually more than one way to solve a problem, um, but uh, we're going to solve this first one using um, identities. So we, we're going to let theta be an acute angle such that the sine of theta is 0.5 and we want to find the values of, this should say cosine, cosine theta and tangent theta because we already have sine theta. Alright, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity. I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1 and really sine squared theta what this means is that I have sine theta times sine theta 
That's really what that means. So if I know that sine theta is 0.5, sine squared theta is 0.5 squared plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. 0.5 squared is uh, 0 0.25 plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Subtract 0.25 from both sides, so I get cosine squared theta is equal to 0 0.75 then I'll take the square root of both sides. So I get that the cosine of theta is 0.866 to three decimal places. Now once I have the cosine of theta, I can find um, the tangent of theta using the quotient identity. Tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, so that's going to be 0.5 divided by 0.866, which gives us approximately 0.577. So um, there's other ways you could do this. Again, you know, we could put this over one, and then we could make a right triangle, here's theta, I know this is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 0 0.5 and that's 1, and then I can find this part of the other leg. Um, you know, but sometimes it might be easier just to use the Pythagorean identities. Um, honestly, I don't care which way you uh, solve the problems, <coughs> as long as you know one way to solve them. Right, now for example 2, um, you do need to know the identities. There is not another way to solve these, so you need to know these. Um, and as we go through and do more examples of, uh, um, this is called verifying identities, so we're going to try and transform one side of the equation to the other. Um, we'll talk about techniques. So the first technique is um, take anything that's not already a sine or a cosine and change it into a sine or a cosine. So we've got cosine theta, secant theta. <coughs> so the cosine theta I'm not going to change, but I am going to put it over 1. And the secant theta, that's equal to 1 over the cosine theta. And y if you notice, I'm only going to be working on the left, so I'm going to try and transform the left into the right. And right away you can see that I have a cosine here and a cosine here, so I'm left with on the left is 1, which does in fact equal 1. And then we'll check that off. Notice my last step here is that I write the two sides are equal and check it to show that I've verified it. Moving on to part B, um, I want to show that all this stuff on the left also equals 1. <coughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL this out. So I'm going to have secant times secant, so that's secant squared theta. And then secant times minus tangent, so that's minus secant theta tangent theta and then tangent times secant, so that's going to be plus secant theta tangent theta and then tangent times minus tangent, so that's minus tan squared theta. So you see these two terms in the middle, those are going to cancel each other out because I have minus secant tan theta and plus secant tan theta, so all I'm left with is secant theta, secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta and um, if you remember, or you look back in the notes, we know that secant squared theta is 1 plus tan squared theta. So I'm going to take this secant squared theta out, and I'm going to replace it with 1 plus tan squared theta. So 1, one plus tan squared theta. So that's the secant part, minus tan squared theta. And I have uh, plus tan squared minus tan squared, so I'm left with 1 equal to 1 again. So we check that off. All right, moving down, uh, just to calculate a problem. <coughs> and um, we've done some of these before, but just to reiterate, I know that uh, the cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over the tangent of theta. So the cotangent of 35 degrees, 36 minutes, and 37 seconds is going to be 1 over 
the tangent of 35 degrees 36 minutes 37 seconds so go ahead and plug that in your calculator make sure you're in radian mode actually scratch that since we have degrees here make sure you're in degree mode so um, go ahead and plug that into your calculator and see what you get um, I'm not sure what mode I was in on my calculator so I'm not going to put an answer here but uh, we'll uh, compare answers next time we uh, see each other in class so again write down any questions you have uh, make sure you ask me next time you see me in class and uh, if you're getting behind in the homework you may want to do some uh, practice problems at home